you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Barry McElhenney, Chief Executive of the PPA, Professional Publishers Association. Uh, I was talking to somebody this morning. They said, what time are you on? I said, five o'clock. They said, that's the graveyard shift. <laughs> I thought, I'm not flying all the way from London to Toronto in the back of the plane uh, for the graveyard shift. So are we ready to rock here? Yeah. OK, so we've got to get ourselves going, and we've got to bring all the people outside who uh, are slacking or doing whatever they're doing. We've got to get them in here. So I want you to imagine that I've just told you the funniest joke you've ever heard, and we're going to laugh hysterically <laughs> to get these people in on the count of three, OK? So I've just told you an incredible joke. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry, sorry you missed it, but do come in, yes. <laughs> OK, we've got a fantastic panel, star-studded panel. We're talking about... Uh, the changing role of the editor. We've heard a lot today about strategy and plans. None of that can happen, in my view, without the editor to add the fairy dust, the magic, and to make these things happen. Or is that still the case? Let's find out. Please welcome our panel from InStyle, from Bonner, and from Parry Match, respectively. Please welcome Ariel Foxman, Linda Malley, and Olivier Royal. Ariel? Olivier? Okay, so we're going to start off. Uh, each of our esteemed panel are just going to talk for a couple of moments about who they are, what they do, and their brand. Um, and have we got the clicker, Ariel? The one. We're going to kick off with Ariel from InStyle Magazine. Well, thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. And that, I'm going to take credit for that joke. Um, <laughs> when anyone comes in and joins us. I'm actually the editorial director of two magazines at Time Inc, uh, In Style and Style Watch, and I'm proud to say that they're the leading women's style magazines on the newsstand in the United States. Um, but I will talk today about In Style. Uh, you were ju just heard from the editor at People Magazine. In Style is 21 years old. It is actually a spin-off of People Magazine. 21 years ago, they decided that people really liked the celebrity pictures in People Magazine and that they were going to investigate that. It's hard to imagine a time when people didn't realize that that was going to be a trend, that celebrity pictures might mean editorial. 21 years later, we are the leading women's uh, lifestyle magazine through a celebrity lens, and I have been the editor for eight years. I'm going to give you a little uh, glimpse of what we do at the magazine and then take you through a little bit of why we feel like we have a differentiated product. Oops, there we go. Sizzle, right? Sizzle. Sizzle. <laughs> so that's our sizzle reel. Um, and it's a really ex exciting place to be working um, because um, in this uh, constant conversation of whether or not print is dying, um, we are still a very formidable print product. We have a multi-platform audience, excuse me, of 24 million. 73% of our audience still comes through print. Um, we have gone to 24 million in the past year by doubling our content online and adding about 9 million people, doubling our social platform to 9 million and doubling our online traffic um, to about 6.3 million. So we um, are increasing our digital platform, but our print is still very strong. 
What it's um, making InStyle such a powerful product, though, for clients and consumers <laughs> everywhere is our service and our aspirational formula. We have the most affluent readership um, amongst the fashion lifestyle set. And still, to this day, um, about eight products are sold to consumers in each and every print monthly issue. Um, we have incredible access in Hollywood fashion and beauty, uh, which allows us over 21 years to get exclusives. Um, we have incredible expertise. We have a director in each of our core categories that meets with designers or innovators in all of our categories. Um, we are still a high-end lifestyle magazine that provides service, um, whether it's on uh, digital or in print, and that is one of our core differentiators. Um, and we spend a lot of our editorial energy and resources creating an environment of aspiration. Um, and I want to, I'm sure we're going to speak a lot about this, but we spend a lot of time and energy creating opportunities beyond print, leveraging the brand. Um, we are opening co-branded <laughs> 800 salons with JCPenney. We have done shoes um, and bags at jewelry with Nine West with a 90% sell-through. Um, we are doing consumer events. Um, we have all sorts of digital in innovation. We have apps. We have digital guides only that don't have print analogs. We are doing newsletters um, to have co-branded sponsorships. And finally, uh, the November issue, which you just saw the cover um, in the sizzle reel, we are the first uh, women's brand to launch virtual reality. So you can get the cardboard viewers and you can go behind the scenes through our cover photography, you can actually be photographed like Drew Barrymore, and Drew Barrymore speaks to you. So we are the first in the market always to bring the new technology. We were the first on Snapchat to reveal our cover. We were the first to do augmented reality. Um, and this is always a branded uh, uh, editorial first, and then with sponsorship opportunities. OK, Ariel, thank you very much. The drill here is we're just going to do two to three minute intro, like Ariel has just done. And then we're looking for lots of questions from me. Sorry. I've got plenty, but we want to hear some from you as well. We've got a bouncing microphone or something. So start to think about those questions. Linda Malley from Bonner Magazine. Tell us about yourself and the magazine, Linda. Hi, everyone. Um, as Barry says, I'm the editor of Bonner Magazine. It's with Caxton Magazines in South Africa. We are the most read monthly consumer magazine in the country and we're published in four South African languages, English, Tosa, Sesotho, and Zulu. Um, we've, you know, a couple of months ago, before, the magazine used to have identical images and, and um, covers for, for all of the languages, and we find that a lot of our readers mistakenly bought the wrong issue by mistake. So they get home and realize, oh, I bought Sesotho instead of Tosa. So this is a little um, something new that we created where we differentiated each cover with a different body and had um, language indicators which we never had before. Um, other platforms on which we operate, of course, are Mobi-enabled websites, social media, events, and most recently, television. Um, our approach to television really came about because not only did we want to be where our audiences are, but we also wanted to you know, move into the space where our revenue seemed to be moving to. A lot of advertisers kept telling us, no, print, you know, we're scaling down on print revenue this year, we're moving it to television. So we thought, all right, we should be on television. And um, we created um, these branded television segments in, in partnership with our advertisers. Um, and the, the reasoning behind that was, you know, instead of your own brand telling its own story as an advertiser, why don't you let the credibility of our brand tell your brand's human story in a way that will resonate with um, your audience as well as ours. So what I want to show you now is a shortened version of um, the segment that we did in partnership with Unilever. It was a great volume driver for them in terms of the product and um, made a tidy sum for us as a magazine as well. So let's hit the video. You're watching One Amor, the show that invites you to take a moment to catch a little inspiration right here to be who you want to be. I'm Linda Mali, editor of Bona, South Africa's most loved and read magazine. Today I'm chatting to a beautician, Unosi Bufugega. She's a mother of three from KZN and the winner of the 2014 Dawn Day Spa competition. Thanks to Dawn, she has won a fully fitted mobile spa trailer, business support for up to a year, as well as a course specializing in beauty treatments. 
I'm going to find out how this incredible prize and opportunity has meant the dawn of a new day in her life. How did you first hear about the Dawn Day Spa competition? I saw it on television. I was like, I am going to win that competition. Are you ready to go and see your incredible prize? Okay, okay let's do it. Let's, let's go, go have it. Are you ready for your life to change right now? I'm ready. Turn around. Okay. And have a look at your prize. Oh, it's the beauty lounge. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love it. Oh, what advice would you give a bandu who are perhaps not really living their dreams and following their passions? in themselves and to believe that dreams do really do come true. And now this life-changing opportunity is open to you. You can stand a chance to win your share of a 600,000 Rand prize towards improving any area of your life. Dawn is giving away 100,000 Rand every month for six months to enter by any Dawn product and SMS your barcode to the number on screen. Follow the competition prompts and Dawn can help you invest in yourself and your future. Follow us today for more opportunities and amazing bonus stories. You can also get more inspiration as well as information on Dawn's life-changing prize in your latest copy of Bona Magazine. I'm Linda Mali. Thank you for joining me. Remember to be who you want to be. Thank you. Okay, so <coughs> our editors are now also TV stars, as you can see. Um, Olivier, Paris Match. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I was going to talk to you about virtual reality, but in style, beat us by two months, so I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about Paris Match. Paris Match is a French magazine that was created in 1949 after the war, uh, based on the uh, human stories. This is the the team of Paris Match, 1949. <laughs> and uh, in 2015, we are pretty true to, the, to the, the, one who the pioneers who created the magazine. Actually, we are covering news, we are covering celebrities, we are covering all kind of politics, uh, features, reports. This is the photo of the newsroom in January, uh, the day of uh, the Charlie Hebdo terrorist attack. I want to talk to you about the changing role of the editor in the newsroom these days. Uh, there is one thing I know is my job is very different from my predecessors. When I came to Paris Match as a reporter, I saw the editor of Paris Match, Roger Theron, as a kind of uh, elseman. He was sitting in the Cotswain seat, he was, giving, uh, he was giving the shaft of the boat, and he was staying on this, uh, on this, on this boat. Today, when uh, they see me running from one office to another, I think that uh, the editor looked like this jungling with plates, and uh, I must say sometimes breaking plates. Uh, what is this? Actually, as an editor today, I find that uh, we are in the middle of a triangle. On one hand, we have what we know to do, journalism. David Carr from the New York Times expressed wonderfully this expression, the storytelling revolution. At Paris Match, we are in this middle of these storytelling revolutions. This revolution created two tempos. Slow journalism, long format, versus short journalism, short stories, curated movement. We are now into a third era, which is the journalism of interruption with the mobile. So the, the, the editors stand there. Then we find out about a second job, audiences. We find out that we, our new job is to engage, monetize, find new, new audiences, and that means that for the editor, it means a totally new area and totally new skills. And then we have the third part of the triangle, technology, which is about integrating news flow. Somebody said we have to be, I think at the Washington Post today, we have to become a techno, technic, technology company. I think it's true. Nothing can happen in our change without this technology. So the, the editor today has a new job. It is, he is in the middle of this, uh, this process, and it's sometimes a very awkward position. Uh, it's difficult to come after People magazine because they have everybody on the cover. So I just wanted to, to say that from my point of view, we had to go somewhere to find a new cover this week. And I would like to say that the, the main challenge for me today for editors is to understand that the, the, the notion of frequency has changed. We came from a, a moment where our customers were, were picking up the magazine, buying the magazine once a week. Now they come to us 10 times a day, and we have to adapt. So let's talk about print. I think I believe in print, and I love, I love what I've heard in the, the former panel. 
Uh, I believe in the power of print and we can prove it like tomorrow morning. We're going to prove it in France. This is the cover of Paris Match tomorrow, an exclusive interview with Pope Francis in Rome that took place last Friday. This issue of Paris Match will be hitting 25,000 newsstands, and I think it's important that in Germany and in France we remain, we keep this newsstand network, which is very important for us. The main challenge for us today is to be able to address this two tempo of news and to be, to be able to, to pass from what I would say from the weekly, the cover, the magazine that hits the newsstand every weekly, to the moment. And the moment is something different. It's uh, trying to give something, somebody, our, re our readers, some kind of a curated moment, shareable moments. And I will give you an example of, of something we launched last week, which is called Match Point. Match Points is uh, a little bit on the, on the model of uh, what we are, 10, 10 wins in New York. You give us 22 minutes, we give you the world. With Match Points, you give us three minutes or four minutes of your life at 6 p.m. on the evening, and we give you an engaging experience of Paris Match. This is an example of what we launched last week. So we understand now, is it difficult for the same person as an editor to be able to cover the weekly and the instant the going from the weekly to the moment? That's a big challenge for our job today, I think. Did you get any good stuff out of the Pope? Did you get any exclusives, any amazing Yeah, quotes? you'd have to buy the magazine tomorrow morning <laughs> to find out. This guy, this guy's we we, we want to protect our value. So what I want to know is I used to edit the mag magazines and, uh, and I had a managing director and a publisher and a CEO, but I was in charge of the magazine. So somebody said, who's in charge of this magazine? It was me. Are, are you guys still in charge of the magazine? Ariel. Uh, uh, yeah, still very much so in charge of the magazine, but I don't think of it, uh, I haven't thought about that um, in a long while. I'm very much in charge of the brand, the brand okay. business and even more so growth. Are you the custodian of the brand? Sure, y yes, of course, um, and the brand values and quality, but it's really about growth and how do you take those values and make sure that you're maintaining growth. And growth for a brand like InStyle can come in very different shades. So. Um, I spend my day with different hats, not unlike that um, pictogram. So for print, it's really about making sure that the quality of the magazine is top notch. And if somebody is buying it and they're making a considered purchase, spending money and taking it home or it's coming in the mail, it has value. And also an in-style reader expects it to be stylish and it has to be beautiful. But with digital, we're growing you know, exponentially. So how does the digital information that ends up in someone else's feed feel differentiated and have the in-style voice. But most of my afternoon is very little to do with content. It's where does the in-style consumer want to see the in-style brand extend itself in product, in events, in other places where the in-style expertise and lens makes a whole lot of sense. That, that trusted, stylish voice is welcome in a lot of other places, and that's also something that I'm in charge of, and that brand custodianship is shared amongst a lot of my market editors. You touched on something there. I was gonna ask you, how do you spend your day now as an editor? Uh, Olivier, and then, and how do you, how, give me a typical day. Monday morning, you come in yeah, and... Uh, the typical day of the editor has changed tremendously. I mean, now we start at 9 a.m., like a radio or 8 a.m., we are like a radio station or a TV station. We have this called the, this morning meeting, and we are talking talk about uh, digital, but we build a program on the, for the website, for the tablet, for the, for the, and for the next, for the coming day. What we, how can we bring surprise? I think it's a key, key word for the, in this digital world. Then we shift at 11 to a new meeting, the cover. What will be the cover next week? Most of the time we don't have a cover. Uh, we're waiting for uh, news to, to happen. So it's a different world. Now we are talking about in-depth journalism, investigative journalism, long format, 
and uh, then we move back in the afternoon to the uh, match point, which and will be the very digest at very 6 long lunch, Very long lunch first? Or? In, Paris, uh, in Paris, lunches remain long. I mean, this is, uh, this is done. But I must say, it is, uh, what, what is mind-boggling for editors like us is to go from one universe to another. Uh, new jobs, and thankfully, new jobs have been created over the last years and months. I would say about, first, uh, the engagement editor, uh, audience engagement editor the mobile editor. So even if we are the custodian of the brand, we are now being, we are sharing our, I think our powers much more than we, than the typical editor in chief would do 20 years ago when it would be the, the king, uh, the sun king. Uh, Linda, you've been doing this for a shorter period of time than, than these gentlemen, but is it the same for you? Is it? Um, yes, I think we are definitely expected and required to wear many hats at once. Um, what I'm finding more and more now is that um, editors are required to interface with advertisers a lot more than they used to. Um, many times it is the editor's presence that will seal the deal, so to speak. So that's something that I've found more and more is a requirement. Because that, that TV clip, that, that's, that was from someone called Dawn, a, a, a yes, Unilever product? Yes, Dawn is a product of Unilever in South Africa, yeah. So, and that's, they've paid for that and you do yes. that? Yes, so the model there was, you know, the client pays entirely for that segment, which is then um, placed in um, certain TV channels that will resonate with the, both our brand and the client. I'm going to ask one more question and then <clears throat> bring in our audience, so please have some questions ready. What do you look for then when you're hiring for people nowadays? Is it the same as you always look for? An ability to tell stories or is it, is it, is it something completely different? Um, Olivier? I would say when I came as a trainee for a summer in Paris match that was 31 year, years ago, uh, they took me aside and they said, we're going to teach you your job. And uh, it, take, it took like months or weeks and then I was in the mall, I was ready to, to work for Paris Match. These days, when I'm getting training uh, young people in, t in team on board, I expect them to teach me something. And what they are, they are teaching me is what we were talking this morning, it's about the way millennials, uh, millennials are, are absorbing content. I mean, this is a totally different. We are, as we are the, the new areas in, in our companies are the ones who are gonna help us to make the transition and who have to help us to, uh, to be uh, mobile, visual, social. I mean, these three key words for the, for the digital transformation. Same with you, Arely. Well, what do you look for? Um, well, people who are attracted to a brand like ours love our key categories, right? Style and celebrity. But um, I, for me, it's really about uh, creating this orchestra. And people have to have very vertical talents. And I expect, again, for them to, to be very good at what they do and teach me this process, but I almost don't need to understand it completely. I have to know how our, our brand sings through that instrument, and I have to trust that they understand the brand values and the direction of where we're going, but that they can just take whatever it is that they do very well, that very niche technique and specialty, and they, and they can take our brand and move it in that direction. Is it, <clears throat> is it okay if somebody doesn't get the digital piece, Linda, is that okay if they just want to do what they've always done or do they have to find no. an opportunity elsewhere, as we said? Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's okay <laughs> because the way that teams are being structured nowadays is that you have to straddle the platforms. Um, it's one team that straddles the platforms because you work for the brand that has various legs. So for you to think you can be a sub-editor and just sub and print, is, it does not suffice anymore. 